In section 9.3, we're still taking a look at two populations. Now, the two populations, they are dependent on each other. Let's take a look at this example. It says the following data lists, lists the ages of a random selection of actresses when they won an award in the category of best actress, along with the ages of actors when they won in the category of best actor. So these two populations, they're dependent on the year in which these awards were given. So it says the ages are matched according to the year that the awards were presented. Complete parts A and B below. Use the sample data with the 0.05 significance level to test the claim that for the population of best actresses and best actors, the differences have a mean less than zero, indicating that the best actresses are generally younger than best actors. In this example, mu sub d is the mean value of the differences d for the population of all pairs of data, where each individual difference d is defined as the actress's age minus the actor's age. What are the null and alternative hypotheses for this hypothesis test? So we're trying to test that the mean of the differences is less than zero. So that's the claim. So let's go ahead and write out the original claim in symbolic form. So we have mu sub d is less than zero. And then what would be true if the original claim was false? Well, then mu sub d would be greater than or equal to zero. So now we could identify our null and alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis, remember, always includes equal to. So we have mu sub d is equal to zero. And then the alternative, take a look at steps one and two. It's the one that does not include the equal to sign. So this would be mu sub d is less than zero. So what we have here is a left tail test. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that answer into the homework problem. So null hypothesis, we have mu sub d is equal to zero. And then the alternative is mu sub d is less than zero. Okay. Now it's asking us for the test statistic. So we're going to go ahead and open up StackCrunch. This is going to put the data in StackCrunch for us. And now we'll get the information that we need. Okay, so let's go to, we're going to go to stat. And since we're testing population means, we're going to go to t-stats. What we have here is paired. So since the two populations are dependent on each other, they're matched up, we're going to go to paired. And now we go ahead and select actresses for the first column, and then actors for the next column. And what we're performing is a hypothesis test. So null hypothesis, mu sub d is equal to zero. The alternative is mu sub d was less than zero. Let's go ahead and put show critical level, critical value, and then significance level 0 0.05. Let's click on compute. And now we have our test statistic right over here. So we have negative 2.38, rounded to two decimal places. Then the p-value given to us right over here says round to three decimal places, we have 0 0.021. Okay, and now we could go ahead <clears throat> and make a decision about the null hypothesis. So now we're gonna compare our p-value to our significance level. So since our p-value 0 0.021, this is less than the significance level of 0 0.05. So here's our significance, significance level, 0 0.05. So since the p-value is less than, less than or equal to the significance level, that means that we reject the null hypothesis. So since we're rejecting the null hypothesis and the original claim did not include equal to, that means that there is sufficient evidence to support the claim. So there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that actresses are generally younger than when they won, a, won the award than actors. Next, we have to construct a confidence interval. So let's go ahead and go back to StackCrunch. I'm just gonna click on options and then go to edit. And now what we wanna do is construct a confidence interval. But now we have to select the correct confidence level, okay? So since this was a left tail test, meaning it's one tailed, 
So left tail test, which just means it's a one tail test. The correct significant, uh, correct confidence level that we're going to be using. So let's put the CL. This would be one minus two times alpha. So we have one minus two times 0 0.05. So we have one minus 0 0.10, which gives us 0 0.90. So this is a 90% confidence level. Okay, so now let's go ahead, go back to stack crunch. Okay, let's change the level to 90%, 0 0.90. Click on compute, and now we have our confidence we have our confidence interval right over here. So we have the lower limit. So it says round to one decimal place. So rounding to one decimal place, we have negative 18.0. Negative 18.0. And then the upper limit, negative 2.4. So what feature of the confidence interval leads to the same conclusion reached in part A. So remember, we had enough evidence to support the claim that actresses are generally younger than men when they won the award. Well, what that means is, so if actresses are younger when they won the award, when you subtract their ages, it's always going to be negative. When you subtract an actress's age, um, when you subtract, yeah, an actress's age minus the actor's age, it's always going to give you a negative value if the actress is younger. So since the confidence interval contains negative values only, that means that we reject the null hypothesis. So remember, the null hypothesis stated that the difference was equal to zero, meaning the difference in their age is zero, meaning they could be the same age. But we rejected that null hypothesis.